Hello, John Talley here with PartZilla.com. Today I'm going to show you how to change out the rear brake pads on our 2016 Polaris 900 Ranger XP. So all we need to do is head to the back end, get it lifted up, get that tire out of the way, and I'll show you how to get it done. So let's go. All right guys, this is going to be skill level one, not really going to be that difficult. Let's go over some of the tools that you're going to need to accomplish this. 5 millimeter Allen, a 15 and a 19 millimeter socket, 3 8 ratchet as always. And as far as the torque wrenches, there's a couple of different ways you can do this. If you have a, a, a lower value torque wrench, you know, something that's under 100 pounds like this one, you can use it, but then you also have to have a breaker bar. On the other hand, if you've got one that goes to at least 120, you can get away with just using it. Only other weird tool that you're going to need is the C-clamp. You'll see once we get into it. All right, now as far as the parts you're going to need, it reference our parts diagrams, and it'll give you an exploded view of everything, what it looks like, and uh, the different part numbers. That way you can go in and order the different parts and pieces that you need for your machine. So, once you have your tools and your parts together, we can go over there and I'll show you how to get it done. All right, let's start by breaking these lug nuts loose. <laughs> that is pretty pathetic there, because when you see me tighten these back up, you'll understand what you're supposed to have on here is 30 foot pounds plus 90 degrees. And when I go to put this back on there, you'll see just how much effort that takes. All right, they're broken loose. Let's go ahead and lift it up and get it on a pair of jack stands on the back. All right, let's start by getting what they call the uh, pad adjustment bolt out of the way. They say you only need to back it off a turn or two. What I like to do is take it all the way out. Next, I want to remove the bolts that are actually mounting the uh, caliper carrier to the hub. It's a 15 millimeter. Now I just slide the whole assembly off. And actually these brakes were, they were in pretty good shape. Your wear is going to be when they get less than four millimeters thick. I mean, this one probably still had another 500 miles left in it. But we're already here. I've already got the pads. I'm going to go ahead and swap them out. So the only trick to this is just to grab a, a C-clamp, and then we're going to compress the piston back into the, uh, the caliper housing. So we're going to go on the back side of the pads. I think I'm going to aim for that little banjo bolt right there. Then we just turn that, and it'll press it right back in. Now it's not going to go flush all the way when it gets to this point. That is all the way in the bore, so you don't need to try to force it any farther than that. Now with that adjustment bolt out of the way, that allows the caliper to slide in far enough into this plate to where you've got enough room to lift off the pads. Otherwise, you can't do it. So that has to be at least pulled back for this to happen. But with the old pads off, we want to inspect these little rubber boots right here because there's actually grease on these two pins that are going into the, uh, the caliper housing. They need to be moving pretty smooth. Otherwise, they'll bind up, or worse yet, clamp down on them and then not release, and then that'll burn them up. So this feels pretty good. I don't see any rips. If yours have any rips, go ahead and replace them. They're not that expensive. And uh, if you do replace them, clean off the grease. It probably has some dirt mixed in. If they are cut, put on a, a good uh, bearing type grease and then put it back together. All right, mine look good, so let's go ahead and get our new pads in. Now at this point, you can go ahead and uh, spread the, the pads open, slide it over the rotor, then we can get it bolted back up. All right, they're snug down. I'm gonna grab the, uh, the torque wrench and uh, torque it to 46 foot-pounds. At this point, you need to go ahead and just pump up the brakes, get them centered. Just a couple of hand pumps, maybe two or three. Now is where you're going to need some of that Loctite. We want to go ahead and put a little bit on the threads. You put it in until it bottoms out, and then we're going to back it off a half a turn. All right, let's go ahead and get our uh, tire back on, and I'll show you how to get it torqued properly. And there's actually a couple of different ways you can do this. If you have a smaller torque wrench like this one right here, it only goes up to 100 foot-pounds. These require 120, so they give you an out. What you can do on the aluminum ones, because they do take a lot more torque than the, uh, the stamped, take it to 30 foot-pounds and then another 90 degrees. So I'll show you both ways. All right, now take a breaker bar. Note where that is 
and then go 90 degrees. So about right here is where I need to stop. There it is. Now, if you happen to have a torque wrench that can go past 120 or up to 120, you can just go straight to it. That is definitely the way I'd want to do it. I don't like doing the torque angle. Go buy a bigger torque wrench. <laughs> That's what I would suggest. Now keep in mind, if you, like I said, if you had the steel ones, it only requires 60. The aluminum, you have to go to 120. Well, all right guys, that pretty much wraps this one up. All I have to do now is the same procedure I did over on the other side with my remaining uh, brake pads that came in this one box. Keep in mind when you order the brake pads for the back, they actually come with all four pads. If you go to the front, you're gonna need quantity two because they only send two in a box. Not my decision on that. But listen, speaking of parts, if you need any, why don't you come see us at partzilla.com and we can get you taken care of. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Till next time, we just want to say thanks for watching.